Hey guys, it's Al from Altruistic Channel, and uh, I actually got prompted to kind of speak a little bit more about my spiritual journey and how it kind of all began. Um, I'm heading into uh, the second part of my um, action plan, if you will, and I'm going to be talking a lot more about like the, the actual journey and some of the things that happened to me and that might happen to you to indicate that you're on the right path for your spiritual journey and how it's going to incorporate a little bit more into your day-to-day -day lives, right? So we'll be going into that. So without further ado, uh, my journey actually began a little bit like a lot of people's, you know, kind of going down the wrong path, but still being a path that I, of my making, right? Like it was something that I was already embarking on, just trying to live my full life. And so many of you know, I was born in New Orleans <clears throat> back in the 70s. And uh, yes, I'm that old. Uh, and I had a really good life. You know, there were a lot of challenges that happened. And that's the one thing about most people who become able to speak uh, on about their spirituality is that they overcome quite a bit early on in their life. Um, some people are like indigo children or, or um, rainbow children, which we'll get much more into a little bit later as we kind of establish the foundational information. But just know that there are people that are actually born in worse states than, than you are and that their journey has been a lot more complicated. Uh, the thing to remember about everyone's life path is that it'll feel sometimes like it's out of your control, but when you get to a certain maturation level, you're going to realize that it's never out of your control, that it was part of a soul's contract, something that you wanted to challenge yourself with as a soul that you brought into this life. Now, how it manifests is usually something that we're not always necessarily in control of. So never look at it like, because there's some of us who have been victimized uh, with, you know, crimes and stuff. We're not speaking to that. God would never propel somebody to get hurt. It manifests in different ways. But the point is that it happens. And so what do you do with that um, afterwards? And so in that regard, just understand that, you know, my spiritual journey was, was dark. There was a lot. It started with molestation and then kind of grew. Uh, I was part of a cult. Um, and that really destroyed my soul. And there were a lot of things that, I, that really screwed, I'll just say it, it fucked me over pretty bad. And I became the victim and I was always, you know, it was always poor little me and all that crap. Um, and then, you know, I had some natural gifts that were kind of interesting. I, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, I was all right. I was good looking, read, reasonably good looking. And so I could get away with a little bit more than other people. And so it fed into this fire of feeling like I could get whatever I wanted without actually putting work into it. And I was very spoiled. And then the ultimate nail in the coffin was when my mother died. And so by the time that my mom died, and I was 26 maybe, I was orphaned at that point and I had no one, nothing. And I got thrown into a, about a decade of a dark night's, into a dark night's journey into, you know, a, the abyss, really. I went to the darkest places and I did some of the stupidest stuff. And I did it because I was like, I'm going to show you if I can't die, I'm not going to like, I'm going to make you want to kill me, you know, like that type of mentality. And it was just stupid. But it was an Al voice, meaning that it was my mentality. And so now that I look back on all of the challenges that came about during that decade, um, it was kind of hysterical because all of it has my signature on it. Like you can just tell that it was me. So understand that when you're on your journey, and especially when you're in a situation where you are really now in a state of panic, where you just think that the world is out to get you and stuff, it, it, it sends you not always into a paranoia state like some people get, but into an actual creation state where you start to then manifest thing after thing after thing after thing. And you think that you're just, that God's just trying to kill you and he's just trying to kill you. But every time you actually try to do something to kill yourself, then nothing happens. And so you get stuck in this perpetual state of, um, of purgatory. And that's what a lot of writers spoke about, is that at some point, especially in a live or die situation, or where something is so traumatic in your life, you may enact the darkest or deepest part of yourself. And instead of working your shadow side um, in cognizant effort, meaning that you're aware of what you're doing, you start to manifest it into your physical life, into something that you experience on the day to day, and then all hell breaks loose. And so, Understanding usually ahead of time is what I'm trying to do here with the with the channel is um sorry I'm adjusting I woke up with a lot of energy today it's really weird because um I was being prompted um anyway let's just say that I was being prompted to get onto this uh, early on so if the camera's shaking a little bit it's just my energy levels off the charts right now um but it's part of the ascension process you get used to it it's just I'm trying to get used to the vibration uh but when it comes to 
that aspect, you know, <laughs> with the channel, I'm just trying to get people to understand that you can proactively look at things and then it diffuses the energy levels as they come at you or you can let it run its course and let all hell break loose. Because either way, it brought down every single tower that I ever had. And the towers were on shaky ground to begin with because of the, the backstory. And the reason I'm avoiding some topics on YouTube is because of the fact that it's YouTube and so I don't know which... Who's looking at it? There could be children or young people that don't need to know about the details of the molestation or about um, the, the cult life and all that. Because there's two books on Amazon. One's a dual purpose to speak specifically about the molestation and about the um, cult living. And then the, the more, um, the more uh, informed version, which is what I would call the Moon King with No Kingdom, which are both available on Amazon. So I would read those if you want. But for this purpose of here, we're going to keep it kind of bland, right? So... In the end, what ended up happening is that as the towers came crashing down around me, I became suddenly very aware that it started to have a sting of familiarity, that it was specifically in my tone, my voice. And it began with a painting that I received from a friend of mine that sent me down the rabbit hole. Now, the interesting part is that the people in New Orleans around me at the time were reflective. They were mirroring me. And I didn't quite understand what the concept is. So just just so you know, so when you are in on the right path or you're getting towards the right direction in life, and, and usually, with, especially with relationships that are personal to you, they start to mirror you, meaning that you and them have similar lives and you start to reflect back on each other. So that which you hate the most, they reflect towards you and then for, vice versa. So you can trigger someone because you're actually reflecting the negative aspect of who they are and what you're doing. And so you mirror each other and it switches back and forth. It becomes very interesting. And so we call them karmics and stuff, but and so as a basic, we'll just go with that. Sometimes people mirror that which you most love about yourself and then what you most hate about yourself. And so be aware that your reality starts to shift and starts to morph into that because that's what you're trying to work through. Your soul is trying to understand something in the physical form and it's creating it for you, the body, because remember, they work in tandem. They want You need to be able to walk forth understanding it, right? And so as you go through your journey, you're going to do that. So what happened is that they started to mirror my environment. And my environment started to become, I thought, very dark. <laughs> and so it just propelled me into this negative space. And finally, I decided to take it into my own hands. And I did something that's actually absolutely forbidden. And I wasn't allowed out. It was like, you can, whatever. And it was a sign of weakness. But in, in the end, you can accomplish what I was trying to do. But I wasn't trying to accomplish it. And I think what I was trying to do is one part of me was trying to freak the other part of me out. Meaning the body was trying to fuck the soul over and the soul was trying to fuck the body over. And they were just basically in competition. It was the last stand in my journey. And so when I was on the ground, I couldn't go anywhere. And I was like, oh my God, I'm fucking stuck here. And they won't let me go and blah, blah. And, I was, and then my brain just went, you get it? And that was it. And that's where the spiritual journey begins. So I'm going to leave you at that part. That's part one. We'll go into the other parts. But what I really want you guys to look forward to <clears throat> is I'm going to be talking about the spiritual path itself and how it starts to manifest into a beginner's mindset. That is going to be what you want to see. That'll be up in the next couple hours. But for now, these little snippets of my personal journey is just little details for you guys to know more about me. Um, and I will continue to tell you more about the path that I have on and how I got to where I'm at and where I, why I'm so confident and comfortable walking in divine guidance and why there's no fear or why, I, you know, people's opinions should never matter to you unless, they're, unless you realize that they are reflections of what you actually think of yourself. But until you trigger that moment, and maybe this is it for you, when you understand that a lot of people that you're going to come in contact are some manifestation of who you are or how you present yourself, that they are reflecting back on you, then you have something to worry about because then someone is, your soul is going, knock, 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 hey, dickhead, let's go, I got shit to do. And sometimes when you don't respond, it will make it happen. And so remember always that in the end, you manifest your destiny. It's just a, it's kind of like just tweaking it to understand where your voice begins and where something else is negatively affecting it. And if it's negative, you have to work that path. And that's what we call doing the work. Anyway, so that's about it for the beginning. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.